Tapping is basically the tendency of two metal contacts, such as in this light switch that I have here, to generate multiple signals as it's being turned off and turned on. In this simple analog system, bouncing isn't going to be an issue, primarily because the light bulb probably isn't fast enough to show that it's bouncing, and even if it was, like we used an LED, our eyes wouldn't be fast enough to determine it. It occurs in all sorts of switches. All switches have it, whether it's a rocker switch, whether it's a spring-loaded switch. This type of switch is in these type of BlackBerry phones. Main Electronics use them as well, and bouncing uh, occurs in all of them. So the reason why it's a big deal is because of microprocessors. They're fast enough where they can respond to that anomalous type of behavior. Whether it's a simple Freescale, whether it's an Arduino, a Motorola processor, there's a Dragon 12, or a simple phone. This one's a much older one, but they all have buttons. And as such, they all have to deal with bouncing. This, for example, board has buttons right on it. Some of these ones may have uh, keyboards attached to them. Buttons cause these anomalous behavior. So let's take a look at it. I have the probes connected over the switch, and as you see as I turn the switch on and off, you can quickly see that there's some behavior occurring. Now, if I do a single shot and I throw the switch off, you can see very carefully what's actually happening now. As I zoom in on the very top, it looks like what's happening is it's going on and off, on and off real fast. It's not a clean type of behavior that you would think a switch would be. It's either on or off. No. In fact, what you have is you have noise caused by the metal. There may be different types of metal. There could be different types of conductivity. They may have grease inside of them. For all sorts of really good and bad reasons, bouncing occurs. And this is the behavior. Now if we take a look at a common push button one, it shows more characteristic of what we would see as bouncing. And you can definitely see now that if you were a microprocessor and you only work on ones and zeros, this switch just went from low to high. That's all that occurred. But you can see as I'm tracing around there how many times it actually went physically. If you were a microprocessor, you would think that I had turned the switch on nine or ten times when I only did it once. Just like a keyboard, if you press the letter A, you only want it to happen once, not eight or nine times. Here's a very good close-up view again, where it, it went on high, and then in a in matter of a half a millisecond, it went low and then up again, and then it dropped back down. For about 11 milliseconds, it was down, and then some interesting behavior occurred there, went rested on high for a very short time, and then finally went back down, and then it goes back up. Another way to see this bouncing behavior in a switch is, is to use analog persistence mode, which works kind of like a heat map. The uh, more the sweeps and the signal rest in one specific area, the hotter or the red color it is. So I'm taking the switch now and I'm moving it open and then closing it, open and then closing it. And what you can see uh, really quite clearly is that in between there, you're seeing that those multiple signals which are creating uh, and generating multiple voltages are actually um, occurring in between the voltage rail. And as a result of that, again, uh, if you're a microprocessor, it may look like you're switching the switch five or six times when in fact you're only really doing it once or twice. Now we're really looking in the micro second level here so if we take this and we zoom it out to the millisecond level like most of the processors are at least um, faster than that you can see that the uh, bouncing effect really only occurs when the switch is either flipped on or when it's flipped off right now it's done only about 140 sweeps and you can start seeing a pattern at the very left hand side when the switches are first thrown one or the other you can see that the bouncing effect occurs there and then as we move to the right it, it it's not as important it doesn't occur quite as frequently so that's where we have um, techniques in place now to remove this bouncing effect so when we throw the switch once on it's on and the microprocessor says okay I'm on when we switch it off it looks like it's going off um, there are hardware methods, whether we're using op amps, whether we're using AONs. Um, there are software methods. The Arduino uses what's called um, MILIS, where you can basically um, look at the past and before, compare the two after a certain uh, time has lapsed, and then make a decision whether that button has really been pressed or not. 
And all of those different techniques are called debouncing, or basically undoing what's happening inside um, that small switch. If you have any more questions, comments, or concerns, you can visit me at uh, bucketofmass.com. I have a lot more videos, documents, scripts, anything else.